Hello, my name is David Lepofsky. I'm the chair of the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act Alliance, or AODA Alliance. I'm also a visiting professor at the Osgoode Hall Law School. I'd like to take a couple of minutes to tell you about a serious problem potentially facing people with disabilities, and in fact, everybody in Toronto, and ask your help so that we can prevent this problem. The City of Toronto is now actively considering a proposal to allow the use and rental of electric scooters or e-scooters in Toronto. We'd like to ask your help in getting Toronto not to allow them. Right now, they're illegal. We want to keep it that way. If the City of Toronto would just focus its efforts on more important issues and leave this issue alone, this problem would not arise. So what am I talking about? What's the problem? Who's asking to get these things allowed? And what can you do about it? Well, first, what am I talking about? An electric scooter is not one of those scooters that kids ride on, uh, like a skateboard that they uh, may push themselves along on the street or sidewalk. And it's not one of those mobility devices that some people with disabilities sit in and use uh, to get around. <clears throat> it's different. It's a motorized scooter that a person would stand up on and race around at speeds upwards of 20 kilometers an hour or faster. They can go a lot faster. They are a silent menace. Right now, as I said, they're illegal. What's the problem that would be posed if they are allowed uh, to be used in public spaces uh, in Toronto, in any public spaces? Well, here's what the problem is. And these focus uh, primarily on people with disabilities, but they are actually a serious problem for everybody. For one thing, they pose a serious danger to our safety, our physical safety. These uh, uh, scooters uh, can be would be able to be ridden by someone who does not have a helmet, does not have, if they're over 18, does not have a driver's license, does not have any training in the rules of the road, does not carry any insurance, uh, and uh, simply can race around at these high speeds and can do so on a device that's completely silent. You wouldn't know what's coming at you if you can see, uh, unless it comes at you from in front. If it comes at you from behind, you won't know what's coming at you. I'm blind. I won't know if it's coming at me from any direction until it hits. Moreover, uh, at those kind of speeds, they can really injure you. And we've heard from cities where they have been allowed that they have caused significant injuries, both to the riders and to innocent pedestrians. So that alone is a serious enough problem. Imagine it hitting a senior who can't get out of the way quickly, quickly enough or who has a balance problem. Imagine it hitting somebody, uh, to, uh, hitting a small child. These can hurt, cause serious, serious injuries, and in some cases, even deaths. Uh, we just don't need this. That alone is a reason to not allow them, but it gets worse. In cities where they've been allowed, there are situations where they are left strewn on sidewalks, especially if they're allowed for rental. And the most common way people uh, get access to them in cities where they're allowed is by renting them. And if they're left lying around on sidewalks, they become a tripping hazard for blind people like me and others. Not only that, they can be an accessibility barrier for somebody using a wheelchair or a walker or other mobility device because of their disability. The sidewalk might otherwise be an accessible path of travel, but all of a sudden somebody leaving a scooter there, it becomes a barrier. And a serious barrier, a barrier they can't get around. So why not just allow them in the sidewalk or on the streets, you might ask? Why not allow them just on the streets and on bike lanes? And then won't this solve the problem? Well, no, it won't. And it won't for a couple of reasons. First, we know from cities that have allowed them and banned them on sidewalks, but only allow them on the roads or on, on bike paths, that lots of people keep riding them on the sidewalks anyway. We also know in Toronto that where adults are not allowed to ride bicycles on the sidewalk, they often do it anyway, and there's no law enforcement that stops them. It's illegal, but it's done anyway. So we can expect that if they allow e-scooters in Toronto, but say, oh no, you're not allowed to ride them on sidewalks, 
they will be ridden on sidewalks and innocent pedestrians on the sidewalks will get injured and will face these barriers. Moreover, uh, not every street has a sidewalk. And of course, if you want to cross the street, you can't do that on a sidewalk. So there are times that pedestrians have to walk on the road and therefore they will pose a danger even when they're ridden on the road as a silent menace coming towards you. By the way, if you think you might want to if there were some laws restricting their use, said, yeah, you could use them, but you, you can't use them on the sidewalk or you, yeah, you can't uh, uh, use them in certain ways that might injure someone and so on, or you can't leave them lying around. Uh, to enforce those laws, you need two things. And we'll have problems with both. First, you need enough law enforcement out there, law enforcement officers. And the city of Toronto has been told by its law enforcement community at a uh, at a public meeting last in July of 2020, looking into this, that they don't have the people power uh, for added enforcement. They're already overloaded as it is. And you'd need a cop on every street corner if you want to enforce these kind of rule, uh, rules on the use of e-scooters uh, with any hope of, of success. But there's a second problem, which is if you're ever going to try to sue or lay charges against someone who injured you on an e-scooter, you have to identify who it was who hit you. But if they hit you, you go flying and next thing you know, they go whipping off into the sunset at, at 20 kilometers or more an hour. You won't be able to identify them. And if you can't identify them, there's no way to enforce the law against them. So the bottom line is, who needs it? Well, who's in favor of it? Well, there's one small group that is vigorously, vigorously advocating for them at City Hall in Toronto and elsewhere. That is the corporate lobbyist for some e-scooter rental companies. Yeah, these are the folks who want us uh, allowing them so they can go rent them out and they will make the money. Put simply, they will be laughing all the way to the bank while we are sobbing all the way to our overcrowded emergency rooms in our hospitals. We don't need more people to line up at our emergency rooms at our hospitals. They're overloaded as it is. Uh, moreover, we as taxpayers shouldn't have to shoulder the cost of the OHIP bills of those injured by e-scooters. Again, while the e-scooter companies and their corporate lobbyists are laughing all the way to the bank. Now, how do we know that they're pressing for them? Well, here's what we know. First, they're all over the media when this topic comes up. They appear at City Hall, but we, my coalition, did a search of the Toronto uh, uh, Lobbyist Registry. And we uh, put together all the contacts they had, uh, corporate lobbyists for these e-scooter rental companies, for uh, from the summer of uh, 2018 forward, about two years plus. What did we find out? They are talking to all sorts of people. They've had up as many as 1,384 emails, phone calls, meetings, virtual meetings with city officials from the mayor's office, which has had a full, fully 92 such contacts, all the way through to numbers of city officials, people on city council, their staff, senior city officials, not so senior city officials. Our best guess is there may be a couple of janitors they haven't yet talked to at City Hall, but lots of others they have. And our answer is that the uh, mayor and city council should be paying more attention to the voters, to the people who will get injured, not just uh, uh, dealing with the backroom uh, 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 efforts of the corporate lobbyists and their feeding frenzy at, at City Hall. So why do they say we should have them? What's their argument? Oh, they claim it's going to be great for the environment. Well, e-scooter batteries will pile up in the garbage uh, and add more landfill, as will e-scooters. They claim it'll reduce circulation and traffic on the road, yet city staff uh, investigation of this has uh, has uh, suggested that these benefits are, are pretty much illusory. They're not real. Uh, the people who are going to ride e-scooters aren't getting out of cars to ride e-scooters. They're people who uh, uh, often are people who would have walked uh, rather than riding their e-scooters. Now that How's City Hall dealing with this? And what could you do about it? Well, City Hall has been considering this. And last summer, on the July, uh, at a July meeting of City Council, 
a proposal was made that the city staff should do further investigation of the impact of e-scooters on people with disabilities before the city go ahead and allow even a pilot project. Well, why is that? Well, lots of us from the disability community have been insisting that e-scooters should not be allowed. But even more so, the city of Toronto has its own city-appointed Disability Accessibility Advisory Committee. And in February of 2020, that committee unanimously and strongly recommended that e-scooters not be allowed in Toronto. In the face of all of this, City Council decided to send this back to their staff for some more investigation. Well, that's helpful, but there were 23 at that City Council meeting, uh, the mayor and, 20, and, and 22 other councillors. The vote for more research was just 12 to 11. It almost got defeated. There are 11 members of our city council who said, no, we don't want any more research into the possible dangers that e-scooters could pose to some of the most vulnerable people in Toronto, seniors, people with disabilities, and so on. That's unacceptable. Torontonians deserve better. So now the staff are looking into it, but we know, and we've heard from multiple sources, that the person who's really going to decide this is Toronto's mayor, John Tory. If John Tory says no to e-scooters, this is going no further. If he says yes, city council is likely to go, go ahead with it. By the way, what the corporate lobbyists are asking for is a pilot project. A pilot project? What they really want is just to get these things up and out there and being rented so that they can uh, get their foothold in the Toronto market. Why experiment on Torontonians? Why experiment when we know that these injure people in other cities? You don't experiment on people without their consent. That's just wrong. So what do you do? Well, we invite you to call or email John Tory. I'm gonna to give you the contact information. All you gotta do is, one simple, is convey one simple message. Do not allow e-scooters in Toronto. And we, we'd emphasize uh, it's important not just to ask that they be kept off sidewalks. Let's just not allow them at all. We don't have the law enforcement to make a, a ban on sidewalks work. So please email John Tory. His email address is mayor, M-A-Y-O-R, underscore Tory, T-O-R-Y, at toronto.ca. Again, that's mayor, underscore Tory, at toronto.ca. The phone number for our office is 416-397-2489. Let me repeat that. It's 416-397-2489. Now, of course, if you call there, you won't necessarily get through to the mayor himself. In fact, I'm sure you won't. But whoever answers the phone, tell them why you're calling and leave the message for the mayor. Say you're calling to say e-scooters must not be allowed in Toronto at all. You could give your reasons or you could just give that simple message, uh, whatever you feel most comfortable doing. So email him, mayor underscore Tory at toronto.ca or phone him 416-397-2489 or both. Also, why don't you encourage other people, your family members, your friends, uh, to do the same. The more people that contact him, the more chance that Mayor Tory will listen to us, the human beings who will get injured by e-scooters, rather than simply listening to the corporate lobbyists who want to make money uh, at our uh, expense. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, please come to our, go to our website. You can learn lots more about our fight for this and what we've tried and what we've proposed. You just go to the following website, www.aodaalliance.org slash e-scooters. I'm going to say that again, www.aodaalliance.org slash e-s-c-o-o-t-e-r-s. Please help us with this cause. Let's make democracy work and let's make sure that no new barriers are created in Toronto to make uh, it harder for people with disabilities, seniors and all Torontonians 
to enjoy our public spaces. Thanks so much for watching this video. Stay safe.